This is another Debate Talk for You radio public announcement. The views and opinions expressed by individuals on this platform, the callers plus invited guests are their own. The information you hear does not reflect the overall views of all parties associated with this brand. We encourage everyone to research all things heard live or via archive for edification purposes. Discretion is advised. Ashe, beautiful people, this is Reese Roberts. I am the host of the Entertain the Thought podcast on SoundCloud, and I want to give a tremendous shout out to Sal and Debate Talk for You Radio for providing a space where like-minded people can really come together and discuss the true state of our community as melanated people. I really want to thank you, Sal, for providing this service to the community and also for providing us access to information. That's one thing that's truly uh, assisting us in our progression as a community of people and it's just invaluable the service that you provide with your shows and all of your productions thank you so much for being who you are peace love and light from reese roberts don't touch that dial you're now listening to the big talk Free radio He was on a go, truck driver's testimonies. Uh, apparently, I was just watching some things on Facebook, and um, uh, this guy, Yehuda Israel, he does a lot of videos while he's in his truck <laughs> driving on the road, you know, talking about God, talking about the scriptures, real things that's going on in his life and stuff like that. So I actually inboxed him, and I let him know, listen, I got an idea, man. Let's do a show for He Was On The Go. And uh, if you can gather some other truck drivers to call into the program, that'd be good. And uh, because to be quite honest, a lot of times, uh, you know, sometimes I call people randomly or some people call me. And uh, a lot of times they'd be people that's uh, driving on the road, like, you know, truck drivers, uh, police officers, stuff like that. And some of them will say they'll be checking out the program while they're uh, doing their jobs. So I found that interesting. I'm like, okay, yo, you know, it says it helps, you know, they say it helps them get, through the day and uh you know they of course you know we talk about other things but i just wanted to do a show dedicated to people that have these kind of jobs i want to like hear some of their testimonies what do they go through how do they do what they do uh and some people actually use that time as a time to talk to the people you know via social media and still you know putting in the work biblically while they're doing their jobs uh so in the meanwhile we have one person that's already here right now uh, we waited for a few others, but as they call in, uh, press number one. Guys, if you're out there, press number one, and we'll bring you in a conversation. The number is 319-527-6239. When you dial that number, you simply press number one, and we'll bring you in. Uh, by the way, family, if you're on Blog Talk Radio, the chat room is back, y'all. I see that the chat room is back, so you can actually go on a chat room, you know, and chat with each other, you know, <laughs> interact with each other. On the blog talk radio, for a while they had that chat that's uh, disabled, but I see they fixed it, so it's back up, y'all. So if you want to go directly to the blog talk page, that's www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash debate talk for you, and uh, click on this particular show he was on the go, and you'll see like a little chat on the bottom there, where if there's anybody on blog talk radio listening to the show, y'all can interact with each other, you know, talk about the show, you can interact with me, I- I'm looking at the chat right now. So we appreciate the family out there that's checking out the program. But without further ado, let's introduce Marielle. Welcome to the show, Marielle. Ah, so loud, so loud, so loud. How you doing? Hey, what's going down with you, man? What's happening? Ah, trucking. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That he was on the go. That's it. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I mean, you know, everybody know Marielle. You know, we know Marielle from, uh, you know, the Hebrew Messianics on trial, you know, Torah only on trial. You know, we know the brother. You know what I mean? He's well known on the program. And, uh, you know, now he got this job. <laughs> he got this job right here. So, listen, how long you been doing this, man? Uh, about, about a good nine months right now. So, I'm pretty new in the game. I mean, there's some people who've been out there for years. But I, still, so I still consider myself a baby in this. But... Yeah. I, I see it. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Now, okay, once again, the show is called Hebrews on the Go, Truck Driver's Testimony. So, again, the number is 219-527-6239. Now, what made you decide to do a job like that out of all jobs? What made you want to do that job? Uh, um, I, I, I guess uh, the enjoyment of, like, just seeing the country. Mm-hmm. Like, or seeing different places. Like, I, I've seen places, but as an adult, I, I, I pretty much just knew, like, you know, Georgia. And, you know, I've never really been to, like, the Midwest or the, you know, Texas. Uh, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different places I've been to. And I finally get to do it. I thought about that. So I was like, oh, I finally do it. And, you know, and I thought about you know, being being able to bring my like, you know, family and all kinds of stuff like that, or a ride or friends or one of them going to a ride. That does see the country. It's a it's a it's a actually a beautiful place out here in America. So I I am getting to see it, you know, like just riding across the country and stuff. But other than mm-hmm. that I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Yeah. So you say you've been doing it for like nine months. Did it did it get like um was it difficult to get into the swing of getting used to doing a job like that? Ah, uh, no, nah, not really. I mean, well, for me, no, no, not really. I, it, I, a lot of things I kind of grasp about it, but um, it, it it does have its difficult moments, you know. But and yeah, it does take a toll. If you're gonna get into all of that, you're gonna get into you're gonna get into all the difficult moments and everything. But uh, once again, family, if you out there, we have a lot of people on the phone lines. If you out there, just press number one if you want to chime in. The one nine five two seven six two three nine. Now let's talk about like, because you know, again, you're very active as far as uh, putting things out there with you know, uh, teaching stuff like that. But when you're doing this job, does it take away from what you used to do? Uh, yeah and no. Yeah, and no. Uh, there's uh, there's certain things that I used to do that I was able to do when I when I was like pretty much stationary, didn't really move or anything like that. Uh, like you know, going to the temple sometimes. You know, uh, being able to completely observe the survive, You know, or 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 whatsoever, because it's a constantly on the go job or whatsoever. But uh, it, it didn't. It didn't. I wouldn't say that it didn't. Um, like stop me completely from doing what I need to do. In the yeah. Now you said that you have uh, been doing it for you know a couple of months, but you linked up with a few brothers or you know a few people that are uh, Israelites, right? That's doing the same job as you. Can you tell me about that? Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of, um, it's, and it's kind of interesting, like that I that I've, I've I've met people on social media, and it's a good thing that we have social media. Like that's really how I feel. Keep in contact with just people to build like relationships with. Um, outside of that, like you see, the, the like one person. A day, and you probably would never see them again. So there's no time to build like a any bond with people. But when you run into truckers or something like that, especially like a TV truck, I and, and and we are out here. Like I've I've ran into brothers, several brothers that you know I saw wearing fringes, and I was like, oh, the truckers are like, and it's it's exciting to see that we are out here. But yeah, we're out here. And oh, okay. So I. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Nah, I get it. You know, yeah, you can finish up. Um, but um, I, you know, coming across them and kind of seeing that, you know, we um uh, are experiencing the same thing in life and or in trucking and. You know, trying to maintain the sequence of uh, uh, laws and 
call it. And for some reason, like lately, I just been running into a lot of Hebrew truckers. It's just like I, I like this this year alone, I ran into five different you know brothers that I've been on the internet that I just randomly just start talking to, and then we do a uh, 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 you know a conference call or whatever, and. I look at their background, and you can automatically see that they uh, they they are here trucking too, or I'm seeing them on Facebook. And, oh, he's a trucker. Oh, okay. And it's, it's just been a bunch of random people that I'm seeing that's just popping up that are uh, that I build with on Facebook or other social media sites and stuff that I see that are truckers. I don't know. And and, <laughs> and I ran into to uh uh I don't know if I should say his name or here. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Um, no, and it, and, and I'm I, I'm I'm gonna say it because it's kind of ironic because it's, he like you just had a Christian Hebrew discussion. It's been a, it's kind of been the topic of uh, of the you know the the flow of things lately, and I've um, I I. I I always came across a guy that he was, I believe he was on here, G Conscious. G Conscious. Oh, yeah, you can say his name. He, he put it out okay, there publicly. Okay. That's what he does. I'll just make a check because yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not yeah. that far back when he was on here that I, I, don't, that I know. Him. But anyway, mm-hmm. come to find out, you know, he, he you know, you know, of course, he, he, he was on to the Christian side of things. And come to find out, mm-hmm. he's a trucker. I'm just yeah, like, oh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, it, 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 it is, it is just interesting how, like, so many people who I've heard to are trucking that are, yeah. you know, pursuing a spirituality. And mm-hmm. I was just like, how do you deal with stuff like that in life? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, once again, this show is entitled Hebrews on the Go Truck Driver Testimonies. Uh, we're supposed to have a few other brothers calling in. We're just waiting to see if they will actually call in. The number is 319-527-6239. Uh, press number one if you're out there and you want to chime into the conversation. But um, let me know, like, what states have you been since you've been doing this job? Like, where have you been? Have you Do you go to certain locations or you go to, like, many various locations? Uh, let's just say I uh, and, and this these nine months, and I'm going on nine months, like, after two weeks, I have to be here my nine month mark. And I've been to all the states except for Nebraska. No, no, I'm sorry, not Nebraska. Uh, North Dakota. No, I hit North Dakota last week. I mean, not last week, but last month. But that was the first time that I've I've hit several states like over and over again. But the North Dakota was one of the one of the recent ones that I was able to mark off. So it has to be just Maine, of course, Alaska, Alaska too far. But Maine, Florida, I've been in Florida ironically, but I should be here in Florida too. But other than that, yeah, just test about every state. Oh, I said, and I, I, uh, I mean, not Idaho, but. Uh, Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Well, okay, so these are the places you didn't get to go to yet. Rhode Island, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. So you've been to New York, yeah. you've been to Chicago, <laughs> you've been to um, these the yeah. big cities. Okay, all right. Been to Chicago right. several times. Oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, now, when you stop off at these places, are like quick stops, or do you get to stay for a little while? Like, how long, you know, how does that work? It just depends on where the loan is at. You know, it's, it's like I I will run through states and I'm like, oh, I wish I could stop here and see actually. But I get to see the city, you know, on during certain times of the day where it's like sunset, you know, midnight, you know. So it's a different scenery. So they always it's always changing up. So that's the great thing about it. But there are certain places that I really so I can just stop in and spend like you know at least a day there. So that's the downfall of it because I'm not able to just like just stop it at every state. You can plan it out and yeah, you yeah. may have time, but you're always on the go. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, okay. 
Wow. So how many nights like are you on a road? Like how does that work? And um, and how what is oh. where's the time for family? Like how does that work? Like how do you make time for the family? I know you travel like cross country. So how many days are you Ooh. actually on the road? And how do you make time for the fam? Uh, for me, it's looking it's looking to change. But in the beginning, like when I first uh, you know kind of started out. Um, like it was months since I see my family. Like I, I would um, like see them. Like at, at first it was six months I didn't see them. Then I finally saw them. And then it's been four months since the last time I've been home. And luckily I kind of switched companies, so I'm glad about that. So and they have me home a lot more now. Even though I'm still out going out there, but they're doing better about me being home because that was one of my requirements of uh, taking the position. So I'm happy about that. But yeah, yeah, yeah you'll be gone for sometimes for like two weeks, maybe three weeks, uh, like four weeks. Sometimes. Oh, oh wow. Okay, what? Well, you gotta hold on, hold on. You be on a road for like two, three weeks at a time, bro? Yeah. Wow. And like that is going out to California, they might your company might have you out of California or on the West Coast for a couple of weeks. And then, oh, now I wanna go home. Okay, yeah, I'll see you home. And mm. then you're home for like two, three Four days if you're lucky. Five days if you take a vacation. But other than that, yeah, you're on the road. All right. <laughs> he was on the go. I don't sound like you're too happy about that. But <laughs> like, yeah, you're on the road. You're just on the road. <laughs> hey, remember that song, On the Road Again? Exactly. <laughs> oh, man, there we go. Hey, listen, once again, if you have any of the other special guests that's on the lines right now, you have to press number one. You have to press number one, and then we can bring you in a conversation. Again, the number is 319-527-623. Now we have a lot of people on the phone line, but those special guests are supposed to be here. Uh, you might be listening, but you got to press number one in order to be a part of the uh, conversation, okay? I see somebody press number one. All right, so let's go to this person. Let's see what this is. 622, you are live. Hey, shalom, shalom. Uh, I'm making this all guys that I'm late. Hey, now, that's not a problem, man. What's your name, bro? How you doing? This is, this is uh, Elvin Israel. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I got off a little early t- tonight, so um, I'm able to enjoy this conversation with my brother about the, about the truck was like, right? Yep, it's called Hebrews on the Go, Truck Driver's Testimony. That's what it's called. You're going to get your testimony as well, brother. Uh, hold up, what's your name again? I, I can't hear you. Okay, uh, uh, Elvin, uh, Elvin, I go by Elvin Israel. The other uh, Israel, okay, I got you. Elvin, okay. Elvin Israel. Oh, Elvin, Elvin, okay. I yeah, Elvin, <laughs> Elvin. Uh, <laughs> not Alvin, Elvin, there we go. <laughs> Elvin yes, yes, Israel. Sir. I got you, my man. I appreciate you being here. We got Marielle here. Marielle, do you know uh, Elvin? Marielle, if you there? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, sorry, I'm going to mute you here so my background won't catch you. But, yeah, so of course, like, yeah, I know Elvin. I knew Elvin for about going on about maybe about four months, five months, I believe. Yeah. I, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how long it's been. Okay, think, there we uh, go. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, my friend was from uh, like a year ago, but we only started communicating like about five, six months, I think. Oh, okay. There we go. So, how long you been doing uh, the job as far as driving? How long you been doing it? I've been uh, on and off truck driving since two thousand and four. Okay. Mm. Uh, I didn't. I, I, I didn't. I didn't pay my dues. Um, I started before I was in the truth, uh, and then uh, I drove school buses also, and I taught a little bit, and then uh, I came back to the trucking industry. But now um, I'm in the truth, but. I'm local now, so uh, the only difference between what I do and what uh, Mariel's doing is pretty much I take my break at home, and he'll take his on the road, uh, his uh, reset break, little 10 hours, but 
uh, I don't know. I don't know his experience, but I, uh, I, you know, I feel blessed by my experience because uh, it allows me to, and I don't want to just ramble on, but it allows me to actually uh, listen to like Bible books and, and uh, a lot right. of commentaries, a lot of a lot of information. And man, I'm talking about like, you know, I'm doing this about eight hours a day, so uh, my brain is impacted with a lot of stuff. So I try to take uh, you know, make use of the time that the most high has allowed me. So, uh, you know, and I get paid, I mean, I get paid for pretty much listening for the thing to things I'm interested in. So. Now, so you do like eight hours for the day. You don't do like, uh, like weeks upon weeks on a row, right? So yours is a little different. Oh, yeah. you, you do, you oh man, I do 14 hours a day. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, because uh, Mario yeah, explained yeah, that. Yeah, I wish, yeah. I wish I could do eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mario explained that he's on a road. How long? Let him know. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, yeah, hear, I can you. hear you. We can hear you. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Like, like we we are allowed so many hours out of the day. So yeah, we're jazzing eight hours a day. But yeah, like there'll be. You know, at time and, and yeah, um, what what Elvin yeah what Elvin does like I know he has the experience and all kind of stuff like that, but I don't know, I'm not I'm too sure of like exactly what he like what's his experience right now with it like or or anything like that, but like well and and, and every trucker story is different. You know, every every experience is different. I'm not saying that I don't enjoy it. I love it. You know, I, I absolutely love it. But, yeah, there's times that it gets, it gets hard, you know, and stuff there, you know, especially when you start over the road. You know, there's different things, like, over the road where you, you, you're going to go across the country. So when you go across the country, you know, you might be gone for, you know, months, sometimes, you know, sometimes we – but, you know, I mean, most times weeks, but sometimes months. And if you're a regional, which is, like, just in the, like, southeast region, northwest east region, et cetera, like that, you'll be gone for maybe, like, maybe about two or three days at a time, you know, a week if you really want to make money, two weeks, but you're back home. And then there's local where you're pretty close to the – you're at home, so you're really just running out maybe one day, come back, and you're at home. You know, so it's different. But so it, it's different experiences in it. But I got I got to get there. I got to get to that point. So I'm working to get to that point. You know, where I can't be home. And when I started off driving, right. uh, I started off team. I started off team driving. So uh, we were staying down man in two months at a time. Oh, you said two months yeah. at a time? Oh, oh okay. Uh, yeah, mm. We were staying on uh, two months at a time, me and my teammates. And uh, pretty much, uh, you know, I'm a Mississippi guy, so I really didn't see the United States until I became a truck driver. And then, um, you know, I uh, ran into all these different uh, personalities and, and uh, everything. And uh, I had a few kids while I was driving over the road. Uh, so, I mean, the experience, it, it, was, it was great, you know. Um, yeah, I think the best you know, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I, I was gonna say how did that, I was gonna say how did that happen, man? <laughs> Big kids on, while you was in a row. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, you know, how, <laughs> young, young man with money, man. That's all I can say. Uh, you know, I mean, I came from Mississippi. You know, we were used to making man. We thought uh, at that time, yeah, you sound a little, uh, yeah, you sound a little far away. Come close to your phone. I don't know if you want to speak. You know. Oh uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got to get a better phone. Uh, but um, I was a, a young go. man, man. Two thousand, two thousand and three, uh, and you know, I thought two hundred and something dollars a week was a pretty good penny. So once you start making about, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars a week, you ain't got no uh, responsibilities. Uh, it's it's easier to get a, you know, into things that that you wasn't prepared for. So that's what happened for me as well as getting all of these children. Okay, all right, I get it. <laughs> I hear that, brother. I want to give you some more of these uh, testimonies. Again, the number is 319 uh, 527 Just press number one if you want to chime in, people. 
Um, all right, so uh, uh, Elvin, uh, what, what's some of the locations that you have you seen? Well, well, have, what's some of the places that you haven't been to? I know you've like you know you've been on the road for a while. So, are there some places that you didn't get to go to while you were on the road? Yes, uh, I've never been to uh, Mexico, and uh, I have never been to uh, Washington. And um, let's see, I think uh, one of the Dakotas. I think I didn't go to South Dakota. I think we went to different ways and, and came in an angle and went to North Dakota. But uh, yeah, there's only been like uh, two two states I haven't been to. Oh, okay, all right, because you've been doing it longer, so I got that. I got that. And what about uh, when it's like drop? I don't know exactly what you do as far as uh, when you do truck driving, and you don't have to get into detail. But um, have you when you stop at certain locations? Do you stay there for a long period of time, or is it like a quick drop off and go? How does it work for you? Uh, see, I drive for uh, I drive for Toyota, so I drive a car parts. So it's all on the uh, pretty much on the shipper, but. For for the most part, uh, I'm at a place for about an uh, hour, hour and a half, and then I'm shooting back off and, and driving back down. You know, uh, they send us to they send us the farthest uh, place we can go and have enough time to get back home. So uh, we really don't have a lot of different uh, stops, man. But I'm pretty much south southeast. I'm sort of like regional, but I get to come home every day. Okay, that's good. All right, all right. Whereas with Marielle, Marielle, he doesn't get to come home every day, right? It's different for you, right, Marielle? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, in here, it's, it really does depend on what company you work for. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, some people, they, they don't work for a company. They work for themselves. We call them, over the road. I mean, uh, we call them owner-operators. And stuff. Mm-hmm. And they yep. they get to choose whether they want to come home, you know, or you know, mm-hmm. pick their clothes there with them. Where some people just they got to take the whatever they give them and go out there. So it's really no decisions on where you're going to end up next. Where are you going to be at next week? Like you could never plan where you're going to be at next week. So unless but, you but, but, go ahead. Mario, the good thing, Mario, the good thing about you though is, brother, after uh, you put in, uh, I think you've been out there for about what four months. Yeah, he's trying to get off you see him on the phone. Uh huh. Been out there about four right, right now. So uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he he been driving for about four months. No, nah, I've been driving for about nine, nine, nine months. Oh, about nine months. Oh man, you could be a. Uh, you could be a trainer right now, man, and 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 double yeah. your income. Well, which 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 I plan to do, but I had to get away from the company that I was with. I had to get away from there, I, so I had to push it to another company. So, yeah, I'm gonna mm-hmm. see, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna definitely see what it has to offer. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, so, he, in, okay. he, in a, uh, he in a good predicament. So, okay, so there's opportunities uh, that you can jump on to step up and get more of a pay rate. Oh yeah, it's a lot of money. It's, it's, it's a lot of money to be made, but there's sacrifices too. Uh, sacrifices as well. Okay. Well, we about to get to that. We about to get into that. Like, what are some of the pros and what are some of the cons of the uh, being on the road? Uh, let's start with um, Alvin, since you just joined us. What are some of the pros and what are some of the cons? Okay, uh, pros, uh, the pros is, you know, you get uh, a lot of time to yourself. Uh, if you have, like, studies or anything that you're interested in, and if you can learn audibly, I mean, it's the perfect job for you. Uh, another uh, plus is you don't have nobody standing over you, hovering over you, uh, breathing down your throat. You pretty much can work at your own pace. So them all, I mean, the money, the money's pretty good also. Uh, so that's a lot of that's the pros uh, that I can think of right now. But uh, it's, it's a, like you said, it's a lot of cons to go with it too. If you want me to just go ahead and hit my cons real fast. Yeah, let's talk about the cons. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, the cons is uh, you, you miss a lot of family time. Uh, you know, your kids they grow up pretty fast, and 
while you out there on the road, uh, you know, you, you you miss some of the those special days like graduation, uh, from preschool and all that stuff, depending on your schedule. Um, another thing is, uh, you got to be sure to uh, watch your health because, I mean, it can get bored out there. You know, you snack a lot, and then you know you can gain weight real, real fast, man. That happened to me. Uh, I gained, uh, I gained uh, a, a lot of weight uh, while I was truck driving the first time, and I had to come off the road, man, and, and pretty much get my health back together. So uh, that's that's a, a bad thing. And then another con is. You don't know the people that you're surrounded with. You meet strangers every day, so some of these people are crazy and they don't have the you know the right spirit. They don't have good intentions. So, I mean, I I, I didn't went through it all, man. I didn't went to uh, people pulling knives out and all this stuff. People trying to rob you while you out there. I mean, I didn't went through all of that. So, and then uh, the last thing is, uh, you see a lot of. After some of the years, you start seeing a lot of bad wrecks. You know, you start seeing a lot of uh, death out there on the road. And, and you know, uh, anybody can run into you at any time. So you got to be on your P's mm-hmm. and P's. So, yeah. Oh, wow. It. Okay. Uh-oh. So, so, hold on. You're seeing some deaths on the road? Or you seeing, like, what, accidents you mean? Stuff like that? Oh, man, all of it, man. Uh, I, got, I got one experience uh, that I can share real fast. Uh, I was yeah. in Arizona. And I got caught in a dust storm. And this is the first time. Like I said, I'm from Mississippi. I don't know nothing about no dust storms. But, um, I mean, it it, it covered the windshield of the truck. And it like somebody put a blanket over the windshield. But anyway, when the dust storm, when it it let up a little bit across the interstate, we could walk across there. It was a bus on fire. And it was into another trailer where uh, I guess they couldn't see and they ran into a trailer. But anyway, um, the driver was pinned down, stuck in. Uh, it was like blood was pouring all out the van. It was dropping like rain, and you could wow. see the. Uh, it was it, it caught on fire, and then uh, you see like people uh, laying there just lifeless. Yeah, you know, man. no, no, no soul in them, man. Yeah, we saw it all out there, man. And then uh, you, you hear people yelling because they're they're pretty much burning to death, and can't nobody get to them. So, man, yeah, it's, it's rough out mm-hmm. there. Yeah, and when you're there, like you know, you're witnessing this. Like, what goes through your mind? Like, you know, like you want to be a hero? Like, like what do you do? Like, how do you feel? Like, right. when you see this right in your face, like, what do you do? Like, when stuff like that happens in front of you? Well, first of all, you gotta think. Uh, we're just, I mean, so what went through my mind? Hey, you sound a little, you sound a little far again. Come, come close to the phone. Okay, sound okay. A far. Uh, what went through my mind was, uh, you know, we just bus explode first of all. Because at that time, you know, my life ain't right, and I know we got we only get one chance at this thing. But um, you got that, and then you got to worry about uh, while you out there helping somebody, what somebody come who can't see, where they come hit you with their vehicle, because it's pileups everywhere, and then you got people crying, and then you got people going in and out of consciousness, man. And if if, if you ain't ready for it, man, uh. You pretty much a panic yourself, man. And I had to actually get myself together a few times, man, because uh, I remember one lady, uh, she was a Mexican, and uh, well, Hispanic, sorry, and she came up to me, and she was just crying, and she was saying, uh, help me find my baby, help me find my baby, help me find my baby, help and she just kept over and over again, and then somebody finally came to help her, man. I just, I, I was like, ma'am, I can't help you because I don't know where you were sitting at. I don't know what your baby looked like. Is he on the bus? Wow. Did he get off the bus? So yeah. yeah, so that's one of the strengths I went through. Yeah, that's some serious stuff right there, man. Wow. Okay, okay. And let's go to Marielle. What about you, Marielle? I mean, you know, let's say some of the cons, brother, because you you know kind of alluded to that. Let's go into some of the cons out there that's on the road for you. Uh, okay. Well, well, before the cons, I I do okay. I do the pros. I was I I would do the pros. Uh, but it's gonna be short because uh, Elvis hit a lot of. Point. I mean, a lot of good things that you know I don't really have to repeat. But you know, yeah, it's like you know, you see in different places, you you know, uh, experience. Like, and I'm very big into like visual things. So like seeing like a sunrise or a sunset on the west coast, which I've never seen before. Uh, you know, seeing like mountains, especially at like, the mountains in like Colorado or Utah. Like so seeing seeing these up close and up in person and stuff, it's 
the experience is is is, is great. So I'm definitely getting here. That's what, if you want to see places, yeah, definitely you're gonna see them. And you're gonna see them a lot. But the cons, um, with with the cons, it's it's, it's a lot. It's a like. Not especially like like yeah, not being home with the family. Like you are literally coming home every once in a while, and you're seeing your children like even grow on you. And you're like, wow, you was already this, you was just this big. Now I come home, and now you're here. Wow, okay. Wait, you can do what now? Like ah, uh, and, and you're just missing everything. But you know, I guess the what I say is like a, I I wouldn't say like. It's bad. It's all, it's all bad because at the same time, you are, like I really feel that I am doing something for my children still. So it's not about like not really being there. It's just more that you know you would if you could, and they know it. But you're out here doing this. You can still do this. So at least you're you know again thank uh, you know the most high for technology. But you know, so I'm able. To like see them, which is still good, but uh, it's like it's a, it's a different it's it's different when you're able to come home and you're able to like or when you're there and you're able to you know raise your children, you know see them every day and really experience it. But yeah, so Mariel, uh, so Mariel, so do you go through like the do you go through where the kids? I don't know how all your children are, but do they like ask for you? Like, why you so? Why they do they question you on why you're gone so much on the road? Do they like want you? You know, do they tell you, "Daddy, stay home"? Or do you go through those kind of things when it comes to the children? Um. Okay. Well, yeah, I have a seven-year-old girl, and I have a two-year-old boy, and he's about to turn three. Well, actually, she's going to turn. Seven pretty soon. That's why I was saying seven. She's been telling me seven for like the past. Every time I talk to her, I might have turned seven. I'm turn, you know. So, and for me, I'm thinking that's like a that's in a, a new stage. I think she's been going to be now experiencing a little bit more stage. She's coming out of the toddler stage, but now she's coming into more stage where she starts. She's gonna be coming very influenced by certain things you know, with life and just certain life experiences and, you know, stuff. But it's like, I can't, I'm not going to really be able to be there with her as she goes up if I feel constantly doing like over the road, like where I have to go to like California or, you know, this because like, even as an owner-operator, if you decide that she's going to drive out to California, it's still going to take at least a week to really get back. And then another week to get back to, like, well, for me, I stay in Georgia, okay? So I will, if I, for me to go through California, I will literally have to drive from the East Coast all the way over to the West Coast, which takes days, especially with her load. And, you know, you have to give another one coming back out. I have to get another one coming back out to Georgia if I want to come back to Georgia where in my home at. All right. it, it would literally take about two weeks to get a, to get across the country and back. Like, just mm. about two, uh, and I'll say about, two, about 10 days to 12, 14. Um, and so that's like two weeks out of your children's life that you're missing. Yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah. Now you both of you guys mentioned a lot of uh cons and pros, but um you mentioned family, you know, both of y'all mentioned family. Um, Elvin, um do you go through some of the same things and let me know like what are some of the statistics when it comes to truck drivers and families? Do you find that a lot of them um are going through broken homes, some of the same struggles? Is there a success rate? Like how does it go? Does it affect the home life as a truck driver? Yeah, uh, um, from my experience, um, personal experience, yes, it 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 actually does. And um, 
See, that's one of those things that, uh, like right now, recently, uh, you know, my wife is, is solid with me. But uh, in, in my parents' relationship, that's one of the things that came up between uh, the relationship, you know, how busy I was and how, how much I wasn't around. And, and then, you know, you have these smooth talkers come in and, and et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, it, it affects your home life. And if 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 you and your spouse, haven't sat down and actually came to uh, uh, a conclusion or actually, you know, talked about everything thoroughly, then it, it, it always come between because you, you put a lot of burden. First of all, you put a lot of burden on your spouse because now your spouse got to be there pretty much doing all of the things that daddy will be doing but daddy's on the road, so daddy's, you know, he's, he's handling business, so mommy got to do the mommy role and the daddy role, and sometimes if the if the mommy is not uh, mentally ready to do it, it's overwhelming for her. And then, you know, it's a lot of things for the kids to, um, you know, everybody don't always raise children the same, regardless if you're married or not, so, uh, and like uh, Brother Mariel was saying, it's some of the those outside um uh, stimuli and all that stuff that your children come in contact with and some things that you know the mother might let them get away with the father be like no we don't want to start that but you know you really don't have any pretty much you can't be consistent with your discipline method or whatever because you're always gone so sometimes it's a strain on the family and i say that uh, communication is very important for this trucker's life Okay, what about you, Mario? What's your uh, analysis on that? Uh, like Elvin, Elvin pretty much hit it on the spot, you know, with the spouse thing. Yeah, it, mm. it, it uh, Oh, sorry. Give me a second. No, nah, it's okay. Um, once again, it's uh, 319-527-6239 if you want to call in family. I see we have a lot of people on the phone lines, but if, again, you want to chime in, you have any questions uh, for the truck drivers here on the program, again, it's called Hebrews on the Go, Truck Drivers Testimonies. Uh, this is press number one, and we'll bring you the conversation, or you can email me a question at debatetalkforyou at gmail.com. That's debatetalk, the number four, and the letter U at gmail.com, and I'll gladly read out your questions to my special guests. Um, so Elvin, I know you have a lot of friends that are drunk truck drivers, right? You have a lot of friends that are truck drivers. Uh, I got, I got, a, I got a couple. I wouldn't say a lot of friends because uh, in this in this walk of life, uh, you pretty much is you separate yourself from the beginning anyway. But I got, I got a few people. Oh, okay. All right. So as far as the other drivers that you know, um, when it comes to their families, I mean, can you talk about that? Like, is it as far as statistics are showing from your end, like is it more success rate or is it more of a failure when it comes to this particular job? I know it's hard. You guys are on the road for like hours, not hours, weeks, you know, but like you said, you know, you've been doing it for so long. So you have uh, pretty much some adjustments for your particular uh, routes, but uh, other people have to really be on the road for a long period of time. Um, tell me about that. Like as far as people that you know, like some of their experiences when it comes to family life. I was the, Statistically wise, uh, I can't I can't give a, a accurate number, but I can say um, that I have noticed uh, just from my coworkers that a lot of the uh, Caucasian uh, truck drivers, a lot of them are divorced. Well, a lot of the, uh, the 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 blacks or the Israelites or the African Americans, however you want to classify yourself, uh, a lot of them are actually together, and they're actually. Uh, progressing as well as you know, keeping the the, the house running and things uh, compared to like I said, uh, some of the Caucasians that I know, uh, and I I don't know the I don't, really don't know the reason why, but that's what from my experience and my coworkers right now, that's what I'm seeing, and uh, I guess because. You know, uh, some of some of us, uh, as, as the as the darker skinned people, you know, we've been going through a lot anyway. So, if one thing we we know how to make it, if if you if you pick the right person, you know, you know how to make it happen. And uh, a lot of people, I guess, that I know, they didn't pick the right person, so uh, they prospering. You know, so 
I don't, I don't, okay. I haven't heard any complaints. Uh, I haven't heard any complaints from any of my brothers and sisters out there because we have women that drive trucks too. I haven't heard any complaints about my brothers and sisters out there with their family. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting too. Uh, some of the females that's driving the trucks. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty interesting right there. You know, hey, if you're female and you out there, you a driver. <laughs> for first number one, we want to hear from y'all. <clears throat> but Marielle, um, I want to ask you something about because you know you be on the road for a long period of time. You said you go, you experience a couple of things or a lot of uh, cons, right? Now, one of the things I do see, and I, I'm not even a driver, but you know, just like looking at the media, like you know, watching television, and you know, like when it comes to some of these truck drivers, racism. <laughs> Did you guys experience any racism Like at some of these stops And stuff like that Have you experienced that Do you feel funny at some of these locations Let's start with you Mario uh, Okay well me I haven't Maybe I'm not into it I haven't been in, in, into it as long as You know certain drivers So I don't know Again every driver's experience I've been Has been is, is different, but for me, I haven't experienced it. It's like as a truck driver, everybody kind of keeps to themselves with me. You know, every truck driver, I, I, I never really see. I mean, uh, unless like you're out out a place where it's not too many truck drivers, because we met, we 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 mainly see the most truckers. Well, we were brand new truckers at. at, at Truckers, uh, gas stations are stopped. So, you know, it's kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, everybody is a trucker. But when you're out somewhere and you run to somebody who you know is, or you kind of see that they are trucking and you're like just out somewhere where you knock or above and see a truck, then it's a different experience. It's just like, yeah, oh, he just trucking. Oh, yeah, let him, you know, cool. Or let him make this turn. Or, you know, uh, you can get, you can move over. I'm a, uh, let you over or whatever. So it, I've never experienced this from just coming from any person, you know, you know, whether it's no matter what race that was a trucker that I experienced. You know, okay. Hatred for it or I, I, I yeah, you know, coming from yeah. All right, that's good. That's good. What about you, uh, uh, Elvin? Like, have you ever experienced any racial tension while you're doing your job driving or stopping at one of these stops? Uh, talk about it. Okay. Um, well, you know, in, in these years I've been doing it, um, not too much racism here in the United States of America. Because, first of all, uh, if we're talking about the trucking industry, we have uh, different people from different walks coming in and out of all businesses at all times. So that wouldn't even work. If you're going to be racist because you got too many uh, minorities and 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 et cetera coming inside of the bill in, inside of your business establishment, so uh, dealing with uh, the business wise, like dealing with these these big venues, no problem. Uh, now, if you're talking about these mom and pop stores that that uh, have diesel and all that stuff, now some of them could. Uh, come off a little bad, but we got to understand, these truckers, uh, they don't have the best attitudes. So, because, you know, they, a lot of them make big money real fast, and they're real cocky and, and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So, so I mean, it, it displays it. And imagine if somebody get on your nerve all day, every day, then eventually you'll start changing your outlook on how you look at certain people anyway. But in Canada, now that's a different story. Now in Bye. Canada, yes, uh, yes, racism to the max. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. yes. I'm, I mean, from the from the time I entered into the border to all of my, I mean, they wouldn't they wouldn't talk to you. They would actually uh, uh, drive by you, man, flipping flipping you off and all of that stuff. Oh, I don't yeah, know yeah. because they hate Americans or they hate black right. people or they hate black Americans, man. But uh, yeah, I remember uh, we had a story. Uh, well, it's a story, man. I went into a, a subway, and and yeah. the lady she wouldn't even talk to me. The worker. Wouldn't even wow. talk to me. She 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 ignored me, and then uh, a white couple came in, and she talked to them. 
And then I'm like, what's going on? And they just like, you know, this ain't this ain't the type of place that you would want to be in. That's all they could say to me. But uh, oh, so me and well, my teammate, know, we they let you know, huh? They let you know indirectly, oh, yeah, yeah, but they directly. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like, like uh, uh, you know, y'all need to go down the road. Uh, y'all need to hit up uh, 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 Quebec and all them places. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah um, and then on the way out, um, we got detained at, at the border crossing for three days, and uh, they wasn't the nicest to us either. But uh, you know, but in America, no problem, man. But in Canada, that's why I had my biggest problem dealing with racism and stuff. But that was back, like, in 2005. So, hopefully it changed by now. I mean, they got, like, Drake and all that, so hopefully they changed. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to say an artist may have changed the spectrum over there? <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. All right. Once again, family, he was on the Go Truck Driver Testimonies. The number is 319-527-6239. We're hearing the testimonies from people that's been on a road old man driving, you know, Maria for a couple months, uh, Elvin for some years, you know, we hear from y'all, and uh, it's supposed to be most people calling in, uh, if you're out there, guys, just press number one, and we'll add you in the conversation, again, the number is 319-527-6239, now, some of the cons um, you mentioned also was as far as eating, right, I, as we know, he is relaxed, we're all about the dietary law, all about the dietary law, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, so, Maria, like, how do you follow that? And you on the road, brother. How do you follow that, man? Or sometimes do you uh indulge in some other things? <laughs> Go ahead, man. Uh, talk about it, man. Yeah, talk about that, no, man. no, that have is like this. Have, have, have you been forced to eat a pork sandwich since you on the road? No, brother? no. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I, I, no. It's like you, you just gotta be very careful because there's places out here that already does that. But I mean, you, you, you make enough like after a while to like be able to afford your own refrigerator. So if you want to eat, like, you know, just picking for vegetables or anything like that where you don't have to stop at certain restaurants but just go to, like, you know, different grocery stores or whatsoever, um, you know, you can. There's, there's ways that you can, you know, be able to eat kosherly or something like that. But, you know, like, if you, if you went from a place, because I came from a place that wasn't, you know, I couldn't just go out and, you know, eat whatever I wanted, you know, but I'm still able to, you know, keep what's needed, like what the most high command is. Because then mapping it out, you'll be able to, you, you you definitely do, like, as a trucker, have to watch a diet, you know. So it's definitely not about eating and not being forced to eat something, it's like you know you're not going to eat that because and, and, and me understanding why we're not supposed to eat it, not just because it's, you know, a commandment of the most high not to eat for it, but knowing why and seeing how most truckers, yeah, can really become the stuff, yeah, you definitely have to watch your, you know, yourself and stuff, or you can just really let yourself go and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Elvin, you already revealed. You said you gained some weight doing this job. Um, was it because of eating stuff that you're not supposed to eat? Uh, how did that go? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, I gained my weight. Um, like back in 2006, 2005. Uh, this is before I was in the truth. And um, I mean, it's so easy to pack up all those calories because uh, everything you're eating is it, quick. Uh, quick food, you know, uh, hot dogs. Uh, uh, they they pack those truck stops with uh, like McDonald's and all that stuff, and you're pretty much on the go because uh, the trucker uh, trucker thing is, you know, you can't make money if you ain't driving. So they they pretty much put you in a lifestyle where if you're not careful, you can get sick. And like I said, that's pretty much happened to me. Uh, so right now uh, it's, it's pretty much easier because I get to come home every day. So uh, you know my diet's legit and all that stuff, man. But uh, you can mess around and it, it get out of control. You know I know I know a few drivers that it, that it happened to. Yeah, and what about like doctors? Uh, do do you, <laughs> you guys like go out of your way to go to the doctors? Um, how does that go as far as the medical benefits when it comes to the truck driving? Is it good benefits? 
Uh, I am pretty sure it's just like any other company. Uh, what they do though, uh, having these trucker licenses, they require you to pass an exam uh, every two years just to make sure that you still can see your blood pressure is good. You, uh, you don't have diabetes. So they make they uh, they require you in order for you to be out there driving. You got to pass a physical every two years. So. Okay, that's good. And what about you, Maria? Deal for you as far as medical. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you, 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 um, the, the companies are pretty good about, you know, giving, like, insurance in, but, you know, you can have, you know, your insurance to be able to stop at any place, like, so if you're going, if you're going to be in, you know, want to check up, but you've got a load going out to Colorado, there's something, you know, insurance that will allow us you to see any doctor out of California, I mean, in Colorado, I mean. But you know, yeah, it, it, there, there's really no worries about health either, as long as you're taking care of yourself and you're eating right, and you are, you know, going to make sure that you are getting checked up to make sure that you're not just gaining or anything. But you, you don't know when you're unhealthy. It's up to you to actually go about it right. You know, trying to watch yourself, catch yourself. Right. I once again, as he was on the go, spam. He was on the go. The number is three one nine five two seven six two three nine. Uh, we, like again, we just a few people who are calling, but I don't know. Maybe they have some difficulty on the program. But uh, what inspired this show is I was watching uh, some things on my wall on uh Facebook because you know I have a lot of like five thousand friends on Facebook, and uh, there's a particular brother named Yahuda Israel, and he's always doing videos from his truck, talking about the Bible, talking about the scriptures. Uh, you know, talking about things that's going on in life. So he's he's on his job using that time also to, you know, use the social media to spread the word and stuff like that. You know, and he was supposed to be one of the callers that called in. Hopefully he still gets a chance to call in. But Elvin, uh, when when it comes to truck driving, do you feel like being that you're an Israelite, do you feel like uh, sometimes it gets in the way of, like, doing other things as far as teaching, preaching? I don't know if you're part of, a, or, you know, a church or whatever. Uh, does it get in the way of um, spreading this, the, the word uh, for you? That. Okay, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm actually, I am part of a church, and uh, I'm on the, I'm on the, other, I'm on the other Hebrew Israelite spectrum, so. <laughs> but, um, no, it actually, um, like I said, I get a, when I get a little break in, um, I usually uh, do a short little lesson or some uh, like for thirty, forty five minutes or an hour. So, no, in fact, uh, it actually helps me make time because I can through I can thoroughly go through a specific things that I want to talk about or I have on my mind, uh, get the information and then and then bring it out. In fact, um, like I said uh, earlier, you know, trucking is is more for if if you can motivate yourself is is to have time to yourself so now just like everybody's using it uh for their own means i think uh it's beneficial if you want to teach or or get to know people or or just reach out and and do uh missionary work i think i think it's actually a good thing Okay, what about you, uh, Mario? Um, do you feel like uh, your job, that being that you had to spend so much time on the road, does it get in the way of your ministry, or what are you doing as far as teaching, stuff like that? How does it work for you when it comes to, like, the ministry aspect of what you do? Oh, yeah, no, it doesn't get in the way at all. Like like Elvin said, um, you know, you have time. You, you definitely have all the time in the world. Like, just like that, like, you see, I'm, I'm at – I'm, I'm driving, I'm able to be on the phone, and then I'm riding to wherever place, wherever destination that I have to get to. But, so you, so I have a lot of time to just do or listen to anything, um, listen to documentaries that you used to watch, I mean, listen to the Vape Talk for You radio, <laughs> and, you know, other, other stuff like that, and, it doesn't get away of anything because you're able to sit and you're able to think about certain things and life and 
grow. I, I, I've actually grew a lot just from being on the road, being able to have the time to talk to the people who are who are uh, who have certain different mindset. Be able to kind of like someone like like me for instance, me and me and Elvis. Like we, it it, it is. Uh, he like he is Mazianic. I'm not Mazianic. But the one thing that we kind of just have in common is that we believe that the, the, the stuff that we stick to as far as, like, you know, I'm to knock only, he's, uh, uh, he, he, he follows the whole book. We both came to the conclusion that the parts that we read have already been fulfilled. Like, remember, I did it. I didn't even do the thing with, uh, with Matt, um, about is the Old Testament prophecy fulfilled, you know, because I have, a, and he has that understanding about the New Testament. So when we came to, together and we noticed that that was the same, we became interested. And then we started talking, and then that's how we became truck driver. Figured that we were both truck drivers, and now, yeah, we've known each other for about five, four or five months. So it's, it's interesting, but now nah, it 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 never really affected. Um, how, if anything, I would say that it actually, you know, enhanced me sharing knowledge with people who I'm able to have free time just to talk to. You know, I do have a couple of lives that I'm going uh, on Facebook. Uh, I don't really put it on YouTube or anything, but they are on Facebook. I do every once in a while. Uh, with just several brothers or anything like that, just just deciding just to do something. So it's not really getting in the way. I know that it definitely means being able to be on the road and having nobody around, you're able to have this much time to be able to be open up to people who really need you because at the same time, it's, you're by yourself when you're on your own, unless you have a teammate. It's fine. It, 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 Teammate is definitely is a definitely different experience from the experience that I'm experiencing right now. So, if, like Elvis, and he had a teammate, he was able to bring it up. Like the fact that I'm doing, I'm a, I've had a teammate, but uh, this is the first time I really experienced it like like solo, and I've been experiencing it solo for the past like five months, and it's mm-hmm. a lonely life. So I want to be able to call <laughs> in. Hey, like like, said, oh, oh, yeah, like, I got all day. Let's say. Okay, <laughs> okay. So how lonely is it, brother? Let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about that. <laughs> say it again. Nah, I said you said it's a lonely life. Like how lonely is it, man? Do you you know, do you start like thinking about things? Do things come in your mind like, oh man, you know, because you've been on the road for so long? Like, is it mentally challenging to stay focused? Yeah. 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 Um I experienced, like, not being able to, like, be there with my children. It was the first time I really joined, especially from my daughter. You know, she's six, but about to turn seven. Uh, but it's the first time that I've really ever been away from her, you know. And I've never been away from her so long. Then I just have my son, who's two, and he's getting into a stage where he's not going to be a toddler too, too much soon. He's actually going to become like my daughter is, you know, and I want him to, I don't want to be gone for so long and he missed where I'm going, you know, where I'm going to. But I I do, it, it, it's mentally challenging because you're out here and it's like you go from that to like being alone. And I'm an extrovert. So I love to be social. I love to be, I got to be around people. And uh, it was quite a few times, especially in like the beginning, that I was like, man, like, and, and in, in the beginning of being by yourself, you do get that alone feeling. And it's like, oh, I've been, and I've been, I haven't seen anybody in life, anybody who I knew, it's not even just like family. It's like friends, you know, mom, dad, grandma. I, and luckily, we still have, you know, media and technology the way that it is. 
because I can't I can't even imagine what the people were going through that didn't have anything like that, didn't have internet where they can connect to uh, people or whatsoever, and kind of you know, take away from it a little bit. Yeah, you have uh, FaceTime, you have um, you know, Marco Polo, where you can have visually see each other uh-huh. and still interact with each other. So I can imagine back in the day when they didn't have that, you know, just the, just the cell phone or no cell phone at all, how challenging it was for, the, was for those kind of people. But, uh, Elvin, what about you, Elvin? Um, you know, you had like, those alone times <laughs> when you was in Rome, brother? Yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, yeah, and, um, uh, just a, you know, a few moments uh, when you when you out there in those states where it ain't nothing, you don't know nobody. Like I was a very sociable person, so um, when I first started driving, like I said, I was teammate. So um, and I teammate with somebody that I grew up with. So I mean, you know, we was always out there. Um, you know, we were just out there pretty much kicking it because I always had my best friend with me. And uh, you know, he had his best friend with him, so every everywhere we went to, we always had things to do, you know. So uh, no really boring moments that I can that I can think of. Uh, everything has been pretty much on a go because uh, I teamed a while, and then uh, when I came off the road, you know, I did other stuff. So now I, I haven't had any uh, boring moments, and. Now, I can't have any boring moments because we have too much technology right now. <laughs> so. Right, exactly. There we go. Now, I think one of the things that I'm concerned about, because I'm, I'm not even like a driver, but I'm just thinking like, you know, if I was a driver, what would be a cause for concern? And what happens when there's like a family emergency? Like, have you ever had that happen to you? Like something happened all of a sudden and you can't be there um, because you're on the road. You know, not even probably in your state. Um, talk about that. Has that ever happened to you, and how do you deal with stuff like that, Alvin? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Um, yeah, it it happened uh, quite a few times actually. Um, you know, dealing with some uh, deaths and and people real sick, having to be hospitalized and all this stuff. But um, you know, we um, like you know we're strong. We got faith in God, so. Um, you know, I was always taught, you know, you know, handle business and, and you know, don't overreact and all that, all that stuff. So, um, you know, when we, when I went through the little hardships that I went through, uh, you know, I just trusted in, in, in the Most High, and and you know, you talk to your dispatch and, and you get home as soon as possible. But, you know, my whole personality and stuff, anyway, uh, you know, I don't freak out about a whole lot of stuff. So I'm able to hold a lot of that stuff in. So. I say um, when we was out there, like my, when, my, when my son was born, I was uh, they was they was trying to uh, induce her, and I was like two states over. That was my first child, so uh, you know it all worked out at the end. So sometimes um, you trust in, in the Most High, and other times you buckle down. And if it, if it don't work out, you know we grown out there. We we make it work. So you know we tell our dispatch, hey. If you can't get me home, I'm just going to leave, <laughs> and then whatever happens, happens. And the beautiful thing about being a truck driver is you're always going to have a job. Truck Truckers is like one of the industries that is, is lacking right now. Everybody always needs a truck driver, so you're always going to have a job. So mm. truck drivers quit and come and go like it ain't nothing. So, you know, mm. job okay. security, if you, if you have a job, security you a lot of that other stuff is you don't stress about so if somebody's sick if they won't get you there you just say hey i'm going anyway and whatever happens happens yeah okay all right what about you mario in regards to like family emergencies has that ever happened to you oh uh, but you know if, if it hasn't like is that something that you think about like if something were to happen all of a sudden how would you deal with that um i've never had no like life threatening anything like that or like somebody one of the kids ended up in the hospital or anything but like there was times that like I wanted to be home luckily it ended like I said it was like I wanted to be home for my son's birthday you know would have been the first time that I would have been like the first time I wasn't there for his birthday luckily I ended up 
just so happened to be in the area on his birthday, I was able to stop, you know, say happy birthday, even surprise him. So it was pretty good and be there for his birthday. But there are times it's like, oh, it's your birthday, and but yet you're on the other side of the country. Like I had to spend my birthday on the other side of the country. First time for everything, though. You know, it was first time I was ever on a spent my birthday not around anybody that I never knew or I don't know. But it was my birthday. But um, no, I never. That I have an experience like not being there when there is just something that's like dire needs, but there are certain things that I miss that I'm like, oh, I wish I was there. Okay, I understand that. All right, family, once again, it's Hebrews on the Go, Truck Driver Testimonies. I get the number, Steve, one nine five two seven six two three. I only got maybe uh, two or three more questions before you pretty much uh, wrap it up. Again, though, family, if you're you know, on the phone lines, and I see you guys on the phone lines, via Skype, your phone, if you have any questions that you want to throw out there, uh, feel free to press number one, and we'll bring you in the conversation. I just only have a few more questions uh, left, and uh, pretty much we're going to you know, wrap it up. But I appreciate the special guest that's here. You know, I know these guys, some, you know, Mario, he's on a roll right now as we speak, <laughs> doing his thing. And we got uh, Brother Elvin, who uh, is here with us right now. But uh, Elvin, um, when it comes to truck driving, right? Um, there's people out there that's doing it because, as you mentioned, there's a lot of money to be made. Um, when you have that kind of mentality going into this job, you may just, you know, I'm talking about money, this money aspect. Do you have to have, like, a love for driving in order to do this? Or you feel like, you know, uh, the money, being money-driven is just enough to, you know, survive on the road? Uh, in other words, you have to have a passion for driving in order to survive as a truck driver. Yeah. Uh, I would say that uh, it will be a good thing to have a passion for driving, but now uh, some people, when I started off, I was motivated by the checks, and uh, that, that, that took me <laughs> years within because um, you control how much money you make if the freight is there. So um, right now, um, I really don't have a, a passion for driving like that, but, you know, it's a job and it pays the bills. So um I, I wouldn't say that you have to have a passion for for driving. I would say that uh, you would just have to have uh, a passion in something. So whether if it's if you're if money is your motivation in order for you to obtain some things, then you will be pushing yourself in order to do what you got to do in order to you know progress in life. So now I wouldn't say you have to have a passion for driving, but it would be a, a good thing to do, especially starting off. Now, once you're in it for a while, eh, but starting off, you should, even though I didn't, I would tell those, uh, please have a passion for driving if you want to do it. It's just, it's just dangerous out there. All right, there we go. Passion for driving. What about you, uh, Mario? Uh, same question goes for you. Um, yeah, how do you feel about that? Mm-hmm. Oh, like, I I actually have a passion for driving passion for driving that's uh i actually that was like a valet for like years years before i got into it um I, it, it, and i like i wanted to be a valet because i was able to drive every type of you know vehicle that there's you know there's out as car as far as like car truck wise but never driven anything like so big so i felt that oh well I'm able to drive this like any other car. Let me figure, let me try to drive a truck. So that became a little bit of motivation of me going into truck driving, but also, um, you know, that the money there is great. So I kind of got a win-win situation with there. But you know, I I actually was when it came there to be like, oh yeah, I want to. I have a passion for driving because now I'm really experienced and really pushed to the test with driving something so big around corners that, like, you know, you'll be lucky if a car can fit through there, you know, or backing out from somewhere, like, you know, short spaces and 
you know, if I really did just back up or, you know, if they can get lost and now you got to go through a uh, neighborhood. It gets, it, 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 yeah, that's like you have to have a passion because it is dangerous. This is one of, like, I can see why they say people, I mean, uh, this is one of the most dangerous jobs because it is extremely dangerous. Like, you got all kinds of Yeah, but explain that. I was going to say, yeah, how is it dangerous, man? I mean, you safe inside your vehicle, you know, like, how is it dangerous? Break it down to us. Ooh, like, okay, because you go to, especially if you're not used to just going back and forth. Well, if you become a truck driver, you're going to a thing different things, especially when you first started off, you're going to experience stuff that you don't experience either on a daily basis or a yearly basis or whatsoever, or experience weather or climate on, you know, a normal basis. This is something that you come out and you go completely new to. The weather's different and all kinds of stuff. Uh, the time of day, because you might be driving at night, so you, you're in the mountains in Colorado, and Colorado is, is weeds, you know, and do, like, snake paths. You're looking like rivers going up mountains, you know, and that gets dangerous. Or, oh, this is the first time that you hit a gust of wind or, uh, you know, a, a windstorm or Covering the car, okay. like you know, you know, hell. So you're saying, so you're saying, oh. there's a lot of natural, like it's not a natural disasters out there, or you know, just the weather in itself alone could be dangerous. While you want to, okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what about you, Elvin? Uh, is there any other dangerous things you want to put out there as far as truck driving? Oh man, just the, um, yeah, pretty much the weather, um, because, uh. It's hard to find out you, when you go in all these different states and stuff, and they have their different radio stations. It's kind of hard to find out uh, what place is uh, experiencing uh, tornadoes and blah, blah, this and that. I got caught in a tornado last week, actually, and I didn't know it was even coming. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it's hard out there. And, and uh, then you got these drivers also. Uh, the most dangerous thing or the most dangerous time to drive to me is when it rains because a lot of people don't know how to drive in the rain and you got to worry about you know not trying to hurt yourself not trying to hurt others uh people make uh silly mistakes because they feel that trucks can stop on a dime and they don't understand that there's a lot of weight in there and it takes football fields with an s in order to stop those things uh comparing how fast you know how fast they're going so people think that we can stop on a dime because it's a big vehicle and we should have big brakes and big brakes should mean quick stop and they don't understand the, the, how inertia works and all that stuff but so it, it's dangerous out there uh doing all times except when it's very pretty outside very clear and you're on the interstate and then it, even then a deer might hop out in front of you <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it, it's dangerous out. you gotta always be watching <laughs> Yeah, wow, you got to always be watching. I right, see so you got some more people uh, listening to the show. Once again, it's not, uh, press number one if you want to chime in, guys. Press number one. We'll add you to the conversation. Uh, again, the show is entitled Hebrews on the Go, Truck Driver Testimonies. Uh, of course, when the show is over, it's going to be up on iTunes, the Apple iTunes, and a podcast section. You can also check out the show on YouTube. Just type in the search box, Debate Talk for You. That's Debate Talk, the number four letter U. And uh, check out the show on YouTube and, of course, on Blog Talk Radio. Um, what about like, um, like, let's say when you park somewhere or let's say, uh, breakdowns, you know, your vehicle broke down. Um, I'm pretty sure you've been doing it for a while. You probably had that experience, Elvin. Um, uh, do people like randomly come up to your truck and just, you know, that could be a uh, part of the danger. Like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I haven't had any experiences that people uh, actually ever, like throughout my whole time, ever came up to the truck and uh, asked for, do I need any help? Uh, because I guess they just figured that. Uh, trucks, uh, you know, they have their own thing going on, and somebody's going to help them because he's a truck. So, yeah, I haven't had any experience that people came up to me, really, and, and uh, start trying to help me and stuff. Uh, no, nah, but from where you park at, uh, you got to be careful where you park at, though, because uh, I know a place here in, uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, where a truck driver got killed uh, a few months back, um, you know, 
at the wrong place at the wrong time trying to talk to the wrong girl and uh they, they killed him and uh I know a place in Nashville where uh, uh a trucker actually went and, and killed somebody because uh he met somebody online and, and he thought it was a girl to find out it was really a guy so he killed them so Oh, you know, man. It, 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 yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's dangerous. It, 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 it's dangerous out here. Yeah, it's dangerous, uh, and and yeah, this is so. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's crazy. So I haven't had any like breakdown issues, but at the truck stops and stuff, you got you got to be careful because everybody's mm-hmm. looking for a quick buck, depending on the town. Right. What about you, Mario? What about some stops? You know, any danger? Uh, do you feel like uh, danger when it comes to you know some of these stops or you know parking spaces or whatever? That ah uh, yeah like yeah, as I said it right like it depends on where you are you can go you could be at a, a, a trucking stop that's not like one of the normal trucking stops that people really stop at there's there's big trucking stops where it's like okay yeah you're gonna see this all over the place so the danger there. Because they have, you know, cameras, all kinds of stuff like that. And sometimes people don't really mess with other people. We 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 don't interact too much in truckers or anything like that. So we don't really have to worry about it. Everybody just kind of keeps to themselves, do whatever they got to do and get on and make money, you know. But um. It, I I haven't experienced anything crazy, but like he said, there are I've heard I've heard stories of like people getting okay, caught up, you know, getting caught up in certain situations, and that you know they in they're they're you know dead somewhere, or you know somebody killed them, you know something something happened, you know. But there's all kinds of stories. But, you know, they're, they're not as, you know, wild as people believe it is, but there are stories out here, like weird stories. Like, what? Really? That, that's, you know. But I haven't really came across any of those so far. All right, that's good. I want you safe on the road, brother. That's good. <laughs> you out there right now doing it. There you go. All right. Yeah. Once again, the number is 319-527-623. I only got a few more questions. going to pretty much wrap it up. But uh, El, uh, Elvin Israel, uh, when it comes to, like, people that want to join and be a part of this uh, truck industry or uh, truck driver industry, um, what are some of the things that you would recommend uh, or, you know, that, they, you know, they're probably totally clueless, don't know anything about it, but they want to get the money. What kind of tips would you give them uh, as far as uh, being a part of this industry? That I, well, I would tell them first off, first, if you if you're in a relationship, please get an understanding before you even try to attempt it, because you can't be out here on the road trying to worry about what's going on at home. <laughs> it just doesn't work. So the first thing I would say is uh, make sure if you're in a relationship, have it together and. Uh, Make sure y'all communicate because no matter what these people tell you, and they they lie. Their their job is to get you in on their in their company. So these ain't the most uh, honest people. They tell you they they are packaging up real good until you get there, and then you find out the truth. So don't go in there expecting all of the stuff that they told you because nine times out of ten they lied to you to get you in there. So. Don't don't have faith in the company. <laughs> have your relationship together, and also um, you know find ways because you got to get your 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 sleeping down pat also. So find ways to make sure you have enough rest because if you don't get that rest, you can hurt yourself. You can hurt others. So make sure that you you're, you're focused on your job and. It, it, you know, every you got everything together straight, and uh, you know, you ain't on no type of narcotics and all of that stuff. And I just say, get out here, drive, have fun, and if you get your CDLs, you will always have a job. So it's it's a job until you are medically incapable of driving. So it's job security. 
Oh, there we go. Some good tips right there. Mario, any tips you want to bring? I know you just uh, been there for nine months, but any uh, tips you want to bring to the, to the newcomers out there that want to join the trucking industry? Uh, any tips uh, that you want to put out there? Got okay, yeah. And I know I know. I was saying, like, um, about majority of the time, but that's just because I'm, I'm currently experiencing uh, them right now. Um Actually, I'm sorry, and I'm I'm actually in the middle, but no, I'm I'm good. I can talk, I can talk, really. But uh, there's some experiences that uh, I've I'm currently experiencing right now that I see on what truck truckers talk about or anything like that. So yeah, listen to the story of truckers. Um, but it is. It's worth it. Just, just always understand that it's, it's, it's actually worth it. And there's a lot of money to be made, you know, a lot of opportunities. Like Elvin says, it, like, you are, it's always going to be, it's, it's, you're always going to have money. Like, companies aren't just going to gonna just let you go because, like, yes, we, companies need drivers, you know, and they're paying there's companies that are even paying their the drivers that they have that when they refer to somebody, you know, they get like, you know, two thousand dollars, you know. We just because they refer to somebody. You know, so I I know that what Elvin says that like, you know, they hurting, they need drivers, you know, that's that's true. That's true. So there's money to be made out here. If you want security and all this stuff, you know, wanna make a better life. Yeah, I never tell anybody not to do it. Okay, if you want to do it, you gotta do it. It's, it's it's definitely good money out here, but just know what you're getting into, though. That's all I would say. It's just understand what you're getting into. Make sure your who your spouse, children, my children know like they not they not. Um, wondering why daddy's not here. They know why daddy's not here, you know, because, you know, I was able to talk to them, have them understand it and know what I'm doing, know why I'm doing it. And you don't, it, it won't, it won't be that hard. Just all you, all you will have to just go out and make some money, you know, just do something better for your family, you know, Okay. All right. Once again, it's uh, he was on the go. Once again, I appreciate you guys for coming on the platform. Just got one more quick question. One more quick question. Uh, let the people know, right, when it comes to um, the single people, because you know it sounds like there's a lot of family oriented people that do truck driving, but for single and you know brews that want to <laughs> drive a truck, do you recommend that? You know. Uh, do, or you feel like they have to have a family foundation before they do this kind of job? Uh, let's go to Elvin. Uh, now, uh, my uh, let's see, my first what three came off of uh, me driving trucks. So my first three kids. So now you could you could be single or or family. Uh, all I can say is uh, be careful out there, man, because. It's, it's 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 a different world that we live in, and everybody don't have the same motivation. And regardless what anybody says, uh, you don't know their true intentions until you really know that until you really know that person. So I say, make sure you get your you, you're right with the Most High, and uh, you you right with with the person that that you are trying to talk to if you're going to be involved. But if you're going to be single. And you like the single life? I say just get out here, man, and, and enjoy life. Because if you're single, you don't have any kids, then maybe you have less reasons to be around, and you have more reason to be out there. And as long as you're out there, you can make more money to better yourself uh, later on in life. So uh, I say if you're single, enjoy. If you're in a, in a relationship, you still can enjoy. Just be careful and try to be as holy as possible. <laughs> uh, try to be holy. <laughs> I get married. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, 
Okay. I, I me and me and my Issa recently just split up, right? And well, it wasn't recently, but it's been it's been a minute. But we split up, and I I was in the you know trucker life and stuff like that. So I now experiencing it without you know pretty much single. Well, not now, but. You know, I experienced. I I got a taste of it. I had. I had to. No, I know. I can't. I can't say this. I can't say this because it is a <laughs> lot of temptation. Uh, oh, uh, oh, it's so much. A lot of temptation out there. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of opportunities. And there would just be a single, like yeah, and you making so much money, and, and like how, how Elvin said. Like especially not having no kids or no especially not having no family. Oh, you can come and go as you please, and you don't really you don't really need a you don't even need a home because you can live out your truck. So you're just constantly just moving. Don't have to worry about no bills, no children. And all you just just getting money. And the only 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 reason why you need uh uh to get even get a car is because. I mean, get, even to get a home, it's because you have a car there. So when you get there, you can go and visit your family, you know, or, you know, your mom, dad. So your car is in your mom's hometown or where, or where you grew up. But other than that, you're, and you're, on the, and you're single. You experience a lot of things out here and, well, if I think that you, I don't know, you're gonna have to pass up on that. <laughs> no, no, sorry, you gotta say because it's so much temptation, so much temptation. I right, uh, speak of the temptation though. Are you talking about like Hebrew women? Do you meet a lot of Hebrew women on the road? Or are you talking about like random, <laughs> like random ladies? Yeah. Oh no, they they are way beyond being Hebrew, you know, and it's like, uh, like it's. Again, everybody, if you're dealing with so many people at one time in one day, in one week, uh, so that you see all kinds of stuff that's just coming about, and it's like really like of course, like you, I, I'm glad that I follow Torah because it's definitely keeping me out of a lot of situations that if I did not have the Most High. I would have been, I would have fell for this. Uh, I would have fell for that. No problem. Oh, of course I would have did that. Like you know, I, of course I would have did that. Like me but, at doing this at the age of like twenty one, twenty two. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, Elvin, I, you want to chime in? That's saying like you want to chime in, Elvin. Yeah, yeah, chime yeah, in. yeah, yeah. That, that, that was my problem, Mario. Yeah, like I did it at the age of twenty one and twenty two. Oh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah, that, that, that was my problem. And, and like you're saying that uh, the temptation will it, it will be crazy if you don't have that that, that foundation. That's why I'm saying you know you try to be holy as possible, man. Because truthfully, if you want to be truthfully, everybody on your Facebook. Is just one load away. You can see anybody on your Facebook within two or three days, if you wanted to. If you if you're a single man, you out there driving for a company over the road. Anybody on your Facebook that you want to meet up with, you can meet up with within two or three days. So that's that's temptation for a young man. Right. Right, yeah. So basically, anywhere around yeah. the world, all you got to do is go on your Facebook and say, "Listen, I'm in your town. <laughs> I'll be in your city." Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay. Like you can, you can, you can, like just going to, see, and then especially like if you're off a load and you and you're waiting to to see somebody or something like that, like yeah, um, call your company. Like, look, I want to go, and then you can really because they don't really care. As long as you're taking the load for them there, they'll send you anywhere. As long as they're able to make money off of wherever you want to go, right? Oh uh, yeah, I'll send you there. You know, but so just imagine like you have Facebook. It's about everybody you know on Facebook is in America and it's somewhere that you can just make it there. And it takes about you know maybe 
three to five, sometimes seven, depending how how many loads you got to take in the mix of getting there. But yeah, it you could be within somebody. You could you could plan out to see somebody next week. If like for instance, I'm in Georgia and I want to go to California, and I know somebody out of California, and I want to go see them. I'm like, look, can you send me out to California? Sure, yeah, I will check and see if I got a load for you. And they want to go out to California because that's a lot of money. But well, yeah, I check and see if I can make you a load to go as far as you can go out there to California, and I can go to California. So all you uh, gotta do is call the dispatch, and they they will reroute you. Like as you say, you want to, you know, is it that easy to be rerouted to where you want to go? Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> like, really, yeah, because like. The, if you want to go somewhere and you just and they know that wherever you you're there, you wanting to go is going to make them money, by all means, do whatever you want to do. They not we're not looking in the back guy to see oh well he's talking to this person you know and you know no you you want to go where to Texas okay sure yeah I see you Texas you you want to take the vote yeah sure okay all right deal take the vote for me you can go to Texas and you go to Texas. Go to Las Vegas. Go to Colorado. Oh, wow. <laughs> Go to New York. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Elvin, so you can have multiple situations at different cities, pretty much. Yep, that's oh, where I got yep, this is my, this is my first three came from. Multiple situations. <laughs> okay, uh oh. So, how do you bring and, that and, all together? And, and, right? and that's what I'm saying. So, you need to have, you need to have some type of, uh, 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 a life coach or something to to if you if you young you need to have somebody to come down. See, I didn't have nobody to sit down and talk to me, you know. So, you know, my dad he was like, "Hey, you you a grown man? You get out, you know, do your thing." So I pretty much had to find it out on my own the the outcome of living that life I lived back then. So you know, now I have. You know, I have sense now, but back then I really didn't have no sense, really didn't have no purpose. It was just money, and like Mario said, you know, I pretty much lived out my truck. Me and my teammate, we live, we lived out our truck, so you don't have to worry about no bills. So you pretty much could keep all of your money, and the way they got it set up is you feel for the company. So you feel for them, they pay for the fuel, you get points on like a card, a fuel card. So you get enough points on the field card, you go into the truck stop and you get free food. So you pretty much don't have, really have to pay for your food either. You don't have to pay for your shower. So you can have multiple I mean, that's pretty much our culture anyway though. We're we're pretty much a a, a, a polygynous culture. So, you know, they're just pretty much piggybacking off of that. But if you do it righteous, it works. But if you don't do it righteous, it, it, it come back and it gets you every time. And that's that's what happened to me. So I say, man, if you if you please stay focused on on what you got and help me go out there. Just don't be out there running around being silly. So that's what I did. <laughs> In other words, learn from our brother Elvin right there. Learn from our <laughs> testimony. Amen. Testimony. <laughs> That's a testimony right there. All right, so listen, brothers, once again, I appreciate y'all for coming on. Uh, like I said, Mario, he's on the road currently as we're doing the show. Uh, Elvin, you know, what time you got to go to work tomorrow, brother? Oh, uh, yeah, brother. Hey, they let me off early tonight, man. I I, I got a, I, I was able to pull a, a, a slick one on them. They went on and let me off. So I don't have to be in the work until 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay, there we go. <laughs> all right, all right. So any last words you want to share to the, the Hebrew Israelites out there that's on the road doing the job? You know, well, you know any uh, messages of uh, encouragement uh, that you want to share with the people out there that listen to the program? Uh, go ahead, Alvin. And I say that if y'all, if, if you take this walk seriously, if you take the Hebrew Israelite walk seriously, and uh, you're tired of wa- working in these factories and et cetera, if you want to stack some money up, I say get your license, uh, get your CDL, come to trucking. You will always have a job. You will be straight. Your family will be straight. You can build your own enterprise. You can get your own truck and build your own and start your own business if you have that the mind for it. If you uh, and if you have the patience for it, you can, you can make it happen. So I say it's, it's a good thing. Uh, also, 
you can get more studying in and all this stuff just if you want to, you know, take this walk serious, as serious as possible. I say trucking is, is, is for you. And, um, you know, you, you can spread this gospel or, or spread the Torah. You can sp uh, spread it abroad. So it, it's a good thing. All right, what about you, Mario? Any words of encouragement for those uh, Israelite drivers out there that's on the road? All right, oh, Mario probably got caught up in something right now. All right. <laughs> All right, so. No, sorry, hey, I, 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 I'm here. There you go. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I had you on mute because I, I might be having a lot of noise in that background. But, um. Yeah, stick stick to it, you know. And like Evan was saying, you know, it's a big. I mean, you have to be found founded in whatever you know you believe in, you know, whether it's a Torah, New Testament, you know, what, whatever you do, be found in what you believe in. Understand that you know, keeping the most high word, as you know. And I know how it is with truckers. Look, you know, I, I know how it is. It's it's hard to keep the shit by. It's hard to, you know, be home for like feast days, you know, be able to congregate, you know, just being away from your family, not being able to like, you know, be really there to teach your children, you know, raise, raise them the right way that you want them to go. I know it's hard for all that stuff, but, you know, it's, it's money out there to be made. It's a very, you can make, you can make, you know, in three years, millions of dollars. You know, like you, it, it's money out here, and, you, and, and and it's quick money. You know, you just got to get there. So just kind of like stick to it. You know, there was times that I wanted to quit, I wanted to give up. I'm just like, nah, I can't do this. But you always have a job. That's one thing. That, like you always, people are always looking for. No matter if this happens to you, I saw a person who he went to he went to jail. You know, had a felony on him, but it's been there for 15 years. Got his trucker license, we're driving for a company. You know, so it's it's really no excuse for you to say that no, I can't do it. But that's if you are, you know, one with with the Most High, one with Tor, one whatever. You know, you you got your law, that you the commandments that you're gonna follow, keep your moral morals um, or whatsoever, and you know, be motivated that, you know, you're doing this for your family, you're doing this for, you know, yourself as well, you know, for you to have a better life, for your family to have a better life, you have to be able to get to a level of trucking that, you know, you'll be able to have something to pass down from generation to generation because a lot of these trucking companies started up from just, you know, one truck and they, all right, they have enough money to make five trucks and then the five trucks be able to make 20 trucks and now you got a whole fleet and, you're pushing it across the country, and now you're making like millions of dollars because there's a lot of money into it, especially if you, you know, stay right, stay focused, stay motivated, you know. And I, I, I will touch a little bit onto the, because everybody, the solution, yeah, if you do it righteously, oh, yeah, you can have a whole empire of truck companies. Like, and, and, and what I'm saying is because you have, you know, one white that can completely focus on your. Uh, and I'm not going to test two bites out there, but one that can actually completely focus into your financial issues, all that stuff like that. And then another one just to really deal with your with the household things because this one might be caught up because they got to constantly keep busy because we got so many trucks. And you're, you're building up to it, but that's a good way to actually be able to economic, economically gain if you do it right. Okay, But, you know, not saying that you can't do it with just, you know, your one spouse, but you know, it's it's a lot of money to be made if you do it right. You know, make sure you do it right. If there's anything else, make sure you do it right. <laughs> I got one. Oh, I got one more question. I forgot to put out there. Just one more. Uh, as far as your relationship with the dispatchers, right? I heard some horror stories, but it comes to <laughs> with uh, the dispatching, I heard you know almost you have to have certain kind of uh, rapport with the dispatch in order to like really see some money. Is that true in your case, Mario? Uh, like it, my last company, no, it, 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 
it wasn't really the dispatcher. Uh, I had an okay dispatch, dispatcher, but um, it was a company that was kind of like just, you know, not really paying well or anything like that, like running out here, there, 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 and I'm only making like, you know, maybe $300, $400 a week or something like that. And I'm hearing truckers that are like, you know, getting paid, you know, weekly like $1,000, $2,000. So I'm making $5,000 a week. You know, I'm like, ah, man, it's, they, they're, they mess with it. But now I got, I'm in this new company and you know, they, you know, doing way better than what the last one, you know, doing way better than the last one. But with my dispatcher of this one, they, or my last one, they was, they was, I've, I've heard horror stories though. Like, and no, 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 like I've, I've, I've talked to show driver today and they're complaining about the dispatch. You're like, oh, like, just, can't focus or anything like that because or not making the money that they're able to make and then because some some issues with the dispatcher they're not sending me there they give me those from you know that short distance and then they're taking all day to you know push you into the next load and or you want to be home and they send you home like that was an incident with me I went home I I I, I asked two weeks out of out of the time you know I want to go home I've been home in like six months. I need to be home. Let me go home. I get home, and uh, like the week before, I told them I wanted to go home. You know, remember, I put in a request. The office was okay, so I want to go home. So send me to a thing that I can be home. So they sent me, they sent me on the way. Uh, no, they, they gave me another load. Uh, my dispatcher gave me another load. He was like, it was going to Texas. So they was like, okay, well, will you go? And I was in Pennsylvania. If you... When you go to Georgia, you can just swap your load out. So I get to Georgia, two hours in, tell me, oh, well, we got to pick you up. Another, you got to pick up another load. Well, I requested a vacation to be home. I'm going to stay home. You know, I, you have issues with that sometimes because they, it just depends on the dispatchers. They want to be making money or something like that or the company or whatever. They, they want to be making money. All way you can make money is, like Elvin said, as long as it's the tires are rolling. You know, as long as the truck is moving, that's the only way that you're gonna make money. So the company is constantly making money. So depending on the company, sometimes they'll be like, "No, you know, gotta keep this truck moving," or they'll try to act like they forget about your home time and what sort of. You got to be kind of on some of these. But some of these um, dispatchers understand, you know. So it really all depends on the dispatcher. Oh, okay. What about you, Alvin? You know, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, dispatchers, uh, man, I'm terrible. <laughs> I didn't have some terrible experiences with some dispatchers. Uh, I mean, because it's good. You got to understand, you know, that their job isn't to be your friend. Their job is to act like they're your friends. Meanwhile, they get paid per load that you do. So they're trying to make sure you're out there as long as possible so they can get the most amount of money as possible. So, um once you understand their role and their duty and understand that most of the stuff that they display to you in the beginning of the company is just them being fake and they just really want you there to drive, it pretty much works. You know, it's easier to work with them because now you know what you're going to do and you know what you're not going to do and you just stick to your guns. So at the end of the day, the dispatcher, they can make you or break you by the loads they give you, but they need you more than you need them. So it's kind of you got the power. They just want to act like that they got the power. So, I mean, some of the dispatches that I have right now at this company that I'm with, you know, we didn't have a few rounds, but, you know, I don't I don't celebrate Mother's Day. So, um, you know, I love my mom, my, my wife, all them, but, you know, I just want some of the things we're going to do with some of the pagan stuff. But um, I'm the only, you know, they needed somebody to work. so. You know, the dispatch that I don't, you know, I didn't have my rounds with, they called me up. But now they know, now you got to come off some duckies if you want me to come in. 
and they came off the duckies like they should, and, and I and I came and I came in. So as long as you understand that, you know, these guys ain't your friends. They 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 making money, and that's all they really care about. They don't care about how sick your child is. They don't care about your health. So you take that that understanding. And that's how you deal with them. You deal with them with that understanding, then it 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 it's easier to work with. Okay. All right. So dispatching is uh all right. Dispatching is uh they can make or break. <laughs> all right, all right. All right guys, so listen, I appreciate you any any shout outs you wanna give to anybody? As listening to the program, we're gonna pretty much wrap it up. Uh, Marielle, go ahead. Any shout outs? Anything you wanna, you know, any people that you wanna say hi to? Yeah. Uh, first I wanna say I'll pray to the most high. Um, do I have any any shout outs? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Shout out to you know, uh, Samra, you know, in Atlanta uh, by not see you should know that. You know, I. I'm I'm actually home, so I'm gonna try to hopefully if I stay past the weekend, I'm going to be able to visit them. Visit them. Um, you know, shout out to you know all the truckers that are out there. You know, trucking. You know, be safe, especially my Hebrew brothers. You know, stick into it. You know, don't lose faith. Um, shout out to Elvin. Appreciate it, homie, for you know coming out on on the on a platform with me and, you know, saying the experience well, uh, you know, that she was experienced with me, you know, and he's somebody who actually, you know, is pretty aspiring because he is a trucker and he's able to do what he do, you know, while being out here. You know, I've seen him driving and, you know, still teaching, you know, and yet I see him, you know, at home with his family and, you know, sometimes he'll be home, you know, teaching, you know, just home and see his kids running in the background. You know, like, ah, look at that. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, okay. So I understand, like, you know, his experience as well like that. And I tried to, you know, it, it inspired me enough to be like, you know, if he could do it, I could do it too. If he's a trucker, I'm a trucker. He's Hebrew, I'm Hebrew. You know, um, what else? Ah, yeah, that's about that's about it. That's about it, you know. Like, yeah. No, I appreciate you, man. What about you, Elvin? Anybody that you want to shout out? You know, they might be checking out the programs. Yeah. Well, uh, shout out to the Most High. Uh, you know, who's ahead of my life. Also to uh, Christ my King and Brother Mario. Thanks for the the kind words, man. You know, you 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 my brother forever. And uh, man. Uh, you inspired me. No you inspired you yesterday, so uh, appreciate that. And this is my first time actually being on being on Blog Talk. So, so uh, thank you, brother, for allowing me to be on your platform. Uh, I called in with a question one day, but this is my first time actually being on it. So, uh, thank you yeah. for that. And <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, I would like to thank uh, you know just to shout out the whole Assembly of Sound Doctor and family out there as well as my mentor, uh, Mr. William Bell. Uh, you know, thanks for all the things that you do for us also. And um, just for everybody I study with, Shannon, Caleb, uh, uh, Matthew, Kenneth, you know, just everybody out there that, that, that I study with. So, you know, and for all of my Hebrew Israelite brothers and sisters in and outside of the trucking industry, I would like to give a shout out to you all too, because without you all, America will not be what America is today. So a big shout out to y'all. And if y'all ever need anything, you know, just let us know.